What is up YouTube? My name is Josh Kenny, and in this tutorial we'll be going over how to make or create reusable modifiers in Swift UI. Now what does that mean exactly? Well let's go ahead and dive in. So see right here I already have a temp, uh, temp project going on. We just have a VStack in that is showing three images and you can see here I added a whole bunch of modifiers on each of these images but you can see they're the exact image. Uh, well, excuse me, they're a different image, but they're the exact modifiers. So I have a resizable, a frame, a corner radius, a shadow, and then a padding. And you can see each of these are the same. So how do you uh, clean this up a little bit where you're not rewriting the same exact code over and over again? Well, that is what this tutorial is about. So let's go ahead and show you how to do this. So we're going to go up here. I'm going to make a new group and I'm going to call this helpers. I always like a helpers uh, file in my project. That's where I keep like extensions, which is what we're getting ready to make. And like this constants folder, which I'll explain that in a minute what that is. But, you know, I would drag that into helpers and things like that. So let's go ahead and make a new file. And we're just going to name this Swift, uh, Swift file. And we're going to call this um, all my extensions. I like to do plus EXT. So since this is an image, I'm going to call it image plus ext so i know it's an extension file and it's easy to read over here that is my preferred way you can name it whatever you'd like uh, we are going to import swift ui i don't know if we need foundation here or not we will see in a minute but i know for sure we need uh, swift ui so we will do swift ui here and then down here we're going to just do the extension of image okay so from there all we need to do is create a method now method is just a function inside a class. So we're gonna go ahead and set that up here. Um, since we're gonna be extending this image class, we are going to name this whatever you like, okay? So I'm going to say func, um, let's call it, since it's an image, we'll just call it a new image modifier. And then we need to pass in, oh, I'm sorry, you can pass in. I'll show you that in a minute. So we can do this as long, but we need to go ahead and return some view. And some view is standard in Swift. And you will notice, let me switch over real quick to explain this. You will notice inside of our reusable, you can see, hey, this is a, uh, is a type some view as well. So it needs to be a some view. So this knows what to do with it whenever we pass it in down here. So we'll go back to our image here. Uh, so we're doing some view and then from there all we have to do is do a self and then now we can pass in all these modifiers um funk what's going on there there we go so we're going to go back over to our reusable and let's get rid of these modifiers here and we named this a new image modifier so there it is right there let's go ahead and hit enter and just like that it's going to do the same exact thing so we can do this on this one as well so dot new image boom and that's going ahead and doing the exact same thing but look how much less code that is now because we pulled it out and we're not copy and pasting the same code each time now here's something else that we can do in this so see how these are the frame is different let's say we want to make the frame the width and height different or in the corner radius different so we can go back into our image real quick and we can pass that as well so let's do let's just change width and height so width uh, width and height. We're just going to call it W and H. I know that's a terrible naming thing. Uh, and I think it's CG float. And then down here, we're just going to call it, we want it to be square, so we're going to call the same thing twice. So W and H, W and H, same thing with this, do a comma and corner radius. So corner radius, we're going to make that. Um, int, I believe is what that is. And we're going to pass corner radius in and that should be good. You can even do colors or what, and whatever else you want. That should be good for now though. Let's go back. Oh, oh, there was an issue. Cannot convert it into, oh, that is a CG float as well. So we'll make this CG float. And now let's go back into this and we're going to have some issues here because we got to pass in the W and H and the corner radius now. So this, we're going to make this one 100. So that's going to make it 100 by 100 and the corner radius we're going to do 10 and then this one we're going to pass in 200 so we're going to 200 
by 200 uh, and then the coordinate radius is 20 like it was before. So boom, so this picture is gonna be a little bit smaller. Boom, this one's gonna be a little bit bigger. And then we can even make this one even bigger. So let's delete this, do, do new. Uh, we're gonna make this 300 and then the corner radius is gonna be 30. So cool, now we got this cool little uh, animation look. Um, and that is how you do it here with an image. Now let's go ahead and delete this out of here. Get rid of that, but keep the V stack. And now I have buttons here that I already created as well to make it a little bit faster so we don't have a super long video. Copy, we're gonna paste these guys in here to take place of those images because doing uh, views like buttons and text and things, it's different than doing it from the image itself. Um, hit Control I, that should make that look a lot nicer. And it didn't, but that's okay. But you see we have three buttons here. They're all three different colors. Everything is great. But if you're looking through each of these buttons, we're doing the same exact thing. The modifiers are the same over and over and over again. So how do we do this with a button? Well, we're gonna do it a little bit different. We're going to go, actually, I'm gonna put it down here first to show you. And then once I'm done showing you, um, I'm going to pull it out of here where we can put it in this uh, constants class and continue using it there. So let's do that real quick. <clears throat> Give me just a second here. And we are going to do a struct. And this is going to be, since we're talking about button, we're gonna make it our custom. This is a very bad name as well because you're gonna have more than one button. So if you name it custom, they're all gonna kind of be custom buttons, but we're going to name it custom button for this case. Um, and then we are going to make this of type. This is an important part, view modifier, because that's what it is. And then inside here, we got a recall method just like we did before. Uh, we're gonna call it body. And you can see it's already got the body content there. We need that. It's already going to do that some return that some view like our, our image did earlier. And then inside here, instead of doing self, we can just pass that content like we did earlier. And we can copy this stuff, copy, and then inside here, paste that here. Great. Now, here's where the, the little bit tricky part comes in. We have this thing ready. We can delete this, but now we got to do dot. And since it is a uh, view modifier, we want to go ahead and type in a modifier and then from there that's when we're going to pass in this custom button and then initialize it and look you can see the black and yellow is showing up there now let's go ahead and do it here we're going to see one issue so we're going to go ahead and do the dot modifier again and then we're going to pass in custom button um, initialize that but you see oh wait these are both black with yellow, which is fine if you want it to be black and yellow all the way across, but we can make this more customizable like we did with the other one. And, and that is done or achieved by inside this struct passing in these variables. So the first thing we want to do is let's say we want to change this background color and this foreground color. Um, that's what we want to focus on doing. So right here, we can do var. We can even do private var if you want, but we're going to do var. Uh, background color is e uh, is of type color that should work there and then inside here we're going to pass in actually we're going to set it to dot black just in case one isn't passed in it'll be black and then we're going to do the same thing var foreground color is of type color and we're going to set this one to be yellow just in case we don't pass it in up here uh, we can still uh, use that so we're going to get rid of this background and just type in background and we're going to get rid of the foreground and type in foreground and now let's see what it looks like up here so right here we don't get errors because you can see when i try to initialize this i have two different initializer one is just the normal initializer which is going to give us the black and yellow or we can go down here, hold option, because it's optional, hit enter, and now we can pass in our own. So let's say the first one we want to do color dot black, and then the foreground we're going to do color dot yellow, which we didn't have to do because it's already doing for us, but uh, that's fine. Now let's up here, let's do the same thing and let's change the color. So again, option, enter. Uh, so we're going to do color 
dot, um, what's a good background? Let's say orange. And let's say the foreground is going to be color dot, what goes good with orange? Let's say, let's see what purple looks like. There, orange and purple, there we go. And now we can pass this as well. Again, getting rid of all this code three times in your view, you're getting taking it all the way out. Um, and that's the, that's the best part about reusing this stuff is it cleans this up, pulls it out, and then also you can use this in other files as well. So you can now use this dot modifier in a minute um, in other spots. So we're gonna copy the same thing, except I'll probably change the uh, foreground. So we're gonna do green. So we're gonna do custom button again dot and then we're going to do uh initialize option and we're going to do color dot green and then the foreground let's do color dot red and there we go um i didn't really like that green but that's okay but you can change this you're getting the point there you can change these um, and you can even go further. So say you want to change the padding or you want to change the horizontal padding to make them bigger or smaller buttons, depending, you can pass that in. Um, the type of font here, so this headline. So right now, if I pass this font, headline to um, caption, you see it got smaller and the buttons got smaller with it. Uh, so you can pass this caption or this font by adding another variable up here and passing it in and then throwing that in this initializer as well three times to change the size of the button as well. I'm gonna put that back as headline, uh, make it a little bigger there. And now let's go ahead and take this struct and take it out of here. So I have that constant folder that I use in another video. Um, very, very helpful. Um, what it is is you, have a, you just have a main struct and then these are reusable. So your background color, well, for instance, if I go back over here and I go, uh, if you remember the buttons that were here before, all those were te they had text like this. So you can go into the constants, make a image name and set it to a static image name. So you're passing this. So you're not misspelling and you can reuse this throughout the app. So we're going to do the same thing here. We're going to add that logic down here, which is our struct. And we're going to pass this. So now we we'll go back over here and instead of custom, we're going to have to hit K first and then custom. And let me show you exactly what that means so k dot you can see i can go to custom button or i can go to color name find what color name bk color whatever is in that constant class but since we want the custom button it's already there for us and we can hit that there um, i'm going since i already have the logic here i'm just going to delete our backspace and do it like that and k dot do it like that so now let that correct itself And there we go, the exact same code. Now we don't have the struct sitting down here at the bottom. We pulled that out of our app. And if you're in a new uh, file, so let's say we are you know, over here and we're using it here. This isn't gonna work, but I'm just giving you an example. And we need to access that. If we hit K dot um, custom button, boom, we can already see, we can do the normal custom button or we can hit option and pass that information in here on a totally new file. So it's reusable and it's less code throughout your app that you don't have to repeat over and over and over again. So that is it for this one. I know short and sweet. I hope you learned something. If you did, please go ahead and hit that thumbs up button. If you want to see my upcoming videos and content, go ahead and ring that bell. And if you have not yet, please hit subscribe and subscribe to the channel as it helps me get my content out to others who may benefit from it. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you on the next one.